going very well. Um, you know, I've got a great cast and they've worked really hard in week one, so we got kind of ahead of ourselves. So I'm very pleased with where we are at the minute. Well, the play, uh, you know, it's a big abstract piece. Uh, it's got moments of reality in it, moments of heightened poetic realism in it. And uh, so you have to find a way of, you know, making it all seamless for, for an audience and, you know, having it all kind of just drift one scene into the other. So basically I've been very work, working very hard on that. Um, it's a play that's driven by the death of a child. Uh, a woman loses her daughter and she can't get over it and she thinks that she's seen a, a vision and there's two other women come along and you know they uh, <clears throat> they decide to support her in that kind of vision quest if you like and uh, you know and they gather around them all these different people so but what the play essentially is about I think what Frank is dealing with here is that there's a lot of collective guilt by people who survive big trauma events and there'd be a lot of people in the north of Ireland who would uh, you know you know be, be kind of suffering for that so I think I think what Frank is driving at in the play is that there's a lot of collective guilt about with, with people who are you know um, who find themselves uh, you know in a situation like oh, there wasn't Derry or there wasn't Oma or wasn't in a skillet that there's collective guilt that people think to themselves, well, why didn't I go out that morning? Why didn't I stop that person from going out? Why didn't I ask my daughter to wait five minutes? And then so they're guilty about the fact that they've survived. And then they want to be forgiven for that, but the only people who can really forgive them are people who were there on the day. You know, somebody who wasn't there can't forgive them. It's only the people who were there can say, look, stop torturing yourself with that. We, we're, you know, we're all going through that together, and you can't blame yourself for that. So there's a lot. Of, that's what Frank's saying. He's gathered all these people together in the play, and somehow they all have to forgive each other for what happened afterwards, if mm. you like, and the guilt mm. that they mm. they survived. Mm. Uh, I mean, the thing about uh, uh, Bloody Sunday, uh, the, that that event, not the play, but the thing about the event of Bloody Sunday, which the play is connected to, but is not about is that it was a worldwide event and it was a big event and it was the first thing that was seen on te TV where worldwide, you know? So the people in the s South saw it at the same time as the people, we all saw it together. So it's all burned into the consciousness of it all at the same time because it was the first event of that sort that was televised. And so they saw it in Paris the next day and they saw it in America and a couple of days later and they saw it in Spain and they saw it in Germany. So. I think collectively we all remember it north and south as, as one of those moments. So I think the, uh, I think the uh, response to it is going to be quite similar, to tell you the truth, mm. because everybody, it was a collective event. After that, of course, things happened in the north that the people in the south had no, had no connection to whatsoever or seemed to have no connection to. They found that they couldn't really deal with it. You know, they were just, you know, more concerned with what was happening in their own lives than what was happening up here. But certainly for that event, there was a collective consciousness. So I'm expecting that the reaction to it is going to be kind of the same, but it's going to be coloured by the fact that there's been this apology now from the British government. And, you know, hopefully the families will have had some closure on that. And hopefully beyond that, the play will act as some kind of further closure at this point. I think the play, the power of the play will have only increased because of what's happened. I don't think it definitely hasn't decreased. I can only see it increasing, you know. I think the mm -hmm. families are going to see the play for what it is in, in, in that it's not about, you know, them in particular. It commemorates, I think, very lovingly the, the dead. They are mentioned, their names are mentioned. Uh, but I think the family will see it for what it is, that it's a play about the aftermath of Bloody Sunday. In fact, it's a play about them. It's not necessarily a play about their loved ones who died. It's actually a play about them. So, you know, I would hope that the play might add to the closure that they're feeling at the moment. Uh, it'll never, you know, nothing's ever going to make up for what happened, of course, but somehow maybe we can 
you know, arrive at some place where we're giving some dignity to those people who died and restoring their dignity and allowing a little bit of clo a little bit more of the closure to happen on mm -hmm. that particular event. Well, it's uh, it's not like a, an ordinary straight linear story beginning, middle, and an end play of this. So I had to sit down and like every play that you come to direct, you have to kind of keep reading it and reading it and start way in advance your preparation. So you read and you read and you read and more and more things are <clears throat> coming to you and suggesting to you till you start to see what the play is about more and more and things start coming out. You've got to mine the text, work away on the text. It's all there. The more you work, most writers work very hard before they deliver the text. You just kind of work as hard as you can on the text to mine it and see what's in it and see what's in it. And then you, you, know, you kind of start seeing images of what the scenes are going to be like and that's what you're trying to then find. And you're trying to find ways of allowing the performances of the actors to happen within that. And when you get into rehearsal, you start trying to put these scenes, as you've seen them in your head, put them together. And then, you know, once you get that structure up very loosely, then the actors, they start to bring their, you know, characterization to it. And then they start to offer you things and you see things and then you bring it to another level. And so you keep building rather like a house. You set the foundations, you put the walls up and eventually you bit block, put more blocks together and you stick a window in here and there. And it starts to, you know, emerge as it were. And then the actors get to know more about their characters and then you bring the costume to it and you show them the set and you put some lights on it. Gradually, it's a gradual process of building everything up bit by bit until you have something that you think, oh God, how the heck did that happen? It's kind of all big and real and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's working. But you don't, it's a scary process. You don't know whether you're gonna get there in the end. You start off by, you know, trusting your instinct on stuff <clears throat> and seeing where it goes, you know? So that's kind of the process. Mm -hmm.